And do you want to replace which bits? That. I have to replace this rubber boot. This is the one that stops our boat from sinking. Got the sail drive out of the um, the boat, 16th of November, 2000. So that would actually make this rubber boot 21 years old, if that was when it was replaced. And if that is the case, it, it's had a pretty bloody good run. But yeah, she is knackered. All right, that's so what I've got to do. Once I've actually started taking the uh, stainless steel lock wire off that course of all the growth in there I've got to scrape all that out and try and pull this out it's my job for the next 10 minutes <laughs> taken out all the bolts that hold the sail drive unit to the gearbox and then this is what we're looking at just got to be careful I just noticed there's a bunch of little shims in here that got stuck to the face here when I pull it apart and it landed down here so I guess you gotta be careful when you're pulling it apart you don't lose those all right oh, look oh, oh. Can't quite see, but that is going to get a clean. There is all sorts of growth down in there. So this is the main water pickup into the sail drive unit. You can see that there's quite a bit of growth in there as well. This is the gasket that'll need to be replaced. Everything else is looking pretty good. So now I've got to take this adapter plate here off and then the rubber boot will come off. Right, so adapter plates come off and there's a little o-ring here which we'll need replacing but um, there's a lot of uh, scum in the oil, which is settled. So that's gonna get a good clean out. Uh, all of this region here, exposed to the salt water chamber. And there's been some growth in there. So there's a muscle that was growing inside. Cause that definitely wouldn't fit through the pickup holes. There's a muscle growing in here, uh, a bit of paint fizz. Uh, generally looking not too bad and here's the, the hole here which goes to the tap here which then goes to the motor so clean all this up replace this boot happy days look at that wow I'm impressed that the boots actually surviving on the inside because this is exposed to a lot of oil you can see like a gooey oil from the engine small leaks over the years always collects in here and you would think that the oil would destroy the um, seal from this side but it's not the case it's the salt water and the um, sea life that tend to destroy it Inside the cell drive pocket here you'll see there was um, a heap of anti-foul and um, 
inside the pocket because the previous owner didn't actually have any uh, covers over the hole. So this is a great big gaping hole, um, which was not ideal for speed or anything because <laughs> all sorts of critters grew up in there and you couldn't clean it out and it was just, it was a shocker. Um, so made the new covers to go over the hole to, uh, and rubber boots and all the rest. But you can see I've sanded this out. Um, so I'm going to epoxy prime all the inside of here. Um, do a little bit of filling and fairing and make my sort of rangy bits of potting my cover in look a bit nicer. Uh, but most importantly, I'll get a layer of epoxy over this polyester glass inside the sail drive pocket sorted out. Uh, and I'm about to go inside, clean that thing and the mating surface for where the rubber boot goes in here. So, <clears throat> back inside the engine room. So, you can see a great big hole from the inside and where I've sanded it nicely, ready for paint. What I've got to do now is clean out the bolt holes, remove this stud from the previous owner clean up all my bolts, make them all look nice. <sighs> Try and sort out an engine mount. Uh, um, because both engine mounts are nicely broken, and they're good. Here's my weapons for cleaning. Um, probably not the most environmentally friendly option, brake clean, but certainly the most effective and the most rapid for doing this particular job. Um, yes, oh, and the bell housing, need to clean up and replace the bell housing, and uh, yeah, bit of uh, cleaning up uh, around the uh, flywheel, and the spline here, I'll get the spline all cleaned up, bit of grease in there, and uh, yeah, then I can start, oh, then I'll put a coat of paint on the inside here, then I'll start reassembling the um, cell drive, clean this stuff up, and then hopefully this afternoon drop the um, cell drive back in the boat. Yay! So, another little update from where we were last time. You can see the cell drive has been painted. I uh, currently have the Nortex A7 cell drive and out drive release foul release paint on here so this is the finished product that will actually see the water uh, on this side um, this is what sees the seawater um, you'll see it's a yellowy color now this is actually Duralac that I've painted on so I took the Duralac out of the tube and uh, thinned it down so that it was paintable and uh, painted over this will help uh, keep the corrosion under control uh, inside the cell drive. And we go over to the cell drive. You see, I took the the water inlet for the engine. Uh, I took it out um, because I didn't like the plastic ones that was original with it. Again, a little bit of corrosion, so I've painted Duralac on here. Lots more Duralac painting. So it was a bit of wire brushing, lots of wire brushing, and Duralac painting, making it uh, all protected, so that'll last another 30 years. Right, time to assemble this gearbox. Right, instructions. Some of the important parts, making sure there's no silicon on the new rubber boot here. New bronze fitting going in here. <laughs> So all new bronze fittings, bore valve, elbow, hose tail, to replace the old uh, plastic barrel one, which is quite dicey and does not feel make me feel very good in the middle of the ocean. Uh, you have to break it and then you're up the creek. But anyway, we have the new gear. This stuff is basically a Loctite, specially designed for gas and hose fittings so it's going to do two things it's going to seal the thread 
and it's going to hold it in position so it can't rotate. Uh, quite important on this little bad boy. So the big rubber boot seals the seawater from getting from this chamber out and then there's the o-ring which seals the inside. Nice. Well done, Volvo. And this bad boy here goes on that way there. Now, it should be noted, these are not standard bolts. These are um, A480s, so these are a higher tensile bolt than the standard uh, bolts. So if you ever have to replace these, um, you're definitely going to have to make sure that you get the right grade. Um, if you get an A470 and put it in here, um, likely your sail drive might fall off due to a head popping off. So watch out for that if you ever need to replace these um, for some reason you lose one or it corrodes or something but these are not a standard grade stainless steel bolt now because these ones are lock wired definitely not going to bother with um, loctite on them because they'll never come undone So here we have a tightening sequence, which means that we will tighten one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then ten. For those of you who are wondering what I'm doing, I'm using this torque wrench to get the correct tension into the bolt. This torque wrench has a spring in it with a uh, funny looking little wedge and knuckle. And once a certain uh, tension is reached, this arm here rocks over on an arm here and it goes click clack. Watch me tighten it up. Got the C and here. Click clack. Click clack. That tells me my bolt is at the correct torque. Now I'll come back and check all the ones that I originally did. Beautiful. Right, that's that all torqued up. Now I get to get the lock wire from this screw to this screw so it cannot physically unwind itself. Put it back in and scratch the heck out of all my paint. Here's inside. It's all really nice and dark. So there's the, um, you can see the new ball valve for the water inlet. You can see that I've painted up the ring that clamps the, the rubber seal in. Uh, also cleaned and painted up the engine mounting arrangement. I'm still waiting for some new 
engine mounts, um, which actually arrived yesterday, so not waiting anymore, but I've got them. So I have to um, fit those. Still, still need to reattach the shifter cable, and that's pretty much it from the inside. I've got water in my bilge here because my hot water cylinder has decided to start leaking. Ah, the joys of boats, never ending jobs, turning up on the list. So the um, I fitted the sail drive into the boat and without recording too much of it because I was lazy <laughs> and forgot. <laughs> but it's in. Um, <laughs> I did scratch the Andy fowl off it a little bit like I thought I might on the trailing edge so I've given it a little patch up. You can see it in there with the um, all the um, pocket is now coated with an epoxy primer. Uh, you can see the new rubber boot in there. Um, it's surprising actually how much softer the rubber is when it's new compared to when it was old and perished. Um, yeah, so there it is hanging out. Just got to finish the uh, the covers and the little rubber boot that will then um, seal around this. So basically this will be all flush around the sail drive except for a 15mm uh, perimeter and that 15mm perimeter is then taken up by the, um, the rubber flap that's supplied by uh, Volvo Penta 